Despite our ability to use light in so many different ways, light itself is still a mystery. It has a dual personality that still has physicists puzzled, but it can be described in two ways that are extremely useful. Light can be described as a ray, a stream of incredibly small and fast-moving particles that usually travel in straight lines. They will also reflect off smooth surfaces. But it also behaves as a train of waves that bend around corners and spread out through small openings. Diffraction is when light does not travel in straight lines. As waves, light can interfere constructively and destructively, making fringes of light. Light is easy to control. You can change its direction by placing something that reflects in its path. Changing the shape of the surface, you can cause the light to focus onto a point or spread out wider. Changing the shape of a transparent material, like changing the shape of a mirror, also changes the direction of the light, refraction. Knowing the effect of a shape of a mirror or lens on a beam of light and using ray diagrams enables the technician to control exactly where the light will go and troubleshoot a faulty system. Laser light is a combination of the most useful qualities of light. Monochromatic or pure in color, coherent with its waves in step, and naturally collimated so it travels long distances without lenses or mirrors, the laser is a most useful optical light source with many applications. Light is a handy tool, but it takes a carefully designed optical system to put it to good use. As a measuring device, a cutting tool, image processor, or simply a way of seeing in the dark. The versatility and usefulness of light is only limited by the optical systems that guide and shape it. The job of a technician is to know how the elements of an optical system affect the light. Many of the effects that you've seen throughout this unit were created by laser artist Mike Padilla, who explains how it works. Using a laser for a laser show is done for a very specific reason. The reason we use a laser is because it puts out a very tight, fine beam of light. It's like a pencil of light. And when you take this pencil of light, you can draw with it up there on the screen, and you can make images that you can't make with a normal source of light that's normally diffused. What we do is we take this beam and we'll send it from one point of the dome to the next, and then to another point, and then to another point, and if you do this fast enough and you repeat it over and over again, you get what appears to be a solid image, when in reality all it is is an image moving from point to point very quickly. The laser we use to do this with is a krypton laser. It puts out a whitish green light. The krypton is the gas that's inside the laser. And we run this whitish green light through a prism. When we run it through a prism, of course, we, get, we break it up into its component colors. In our case, it's red, yellow, green, and blue. And we send these colors to different scanner sets. The scanner sets are actually what move the beam around up there on the, on the dome. A scanner is simply a device that will vibrate a mirror at any frequency you put into that. So if you have a mirror vibrating very slowly, 
in the horizontal direction, for instance, you'll get a dot moving back and forth. Now, if you start moving it faster and faster, you'll get a line. Now, if you have another scanner moving vertically, of course, you'll get a vertical line. Now, if you combine these two, mathematically, you can get different images out of it. They're called Lissajou patterns or rosettes or whatever. You can get abstract images out of it by mixing different oscillators together. And that's the way we get the abstract images up there. It's done electronically with a synthesizer, similar to what I have here on the board. The other images that we can do are computer animation. The computer animation is done with an artist drawing out an image, putting it into the computer, and we store it on tape here, and when we play back the tape, we actually are playing back sets of coordinates on the screen. The beam goes to these different coordinates up there on the screen, traces it over and over again, and these coordinates, of course, correspond to what was drawn into the computer, and you will perceive um, Snoopy dancing, or a dancer up there, or also anything you can, your imagination can think of to animate. Probably the most bizarre optical system ever discovered could prove to be the largest system ever used. Galaxies are shaped like convex lenses when seen edge on. Einstein proved that mass or gravitational attraction will bend light. So theorists believe that a galaxy in the right position could focus the image of a distant object onto an eyepiece on the Earth, like the lens of a giant telescope. It's a clever idea. The only problem is that no one's figured out how to aim a galactic telescope. This program was produced under the direction of AIT at the facilities of Telemation Productions and is part of Principles of Technology. Developed by the Agency for Instructional Technology in cooperation with the Center for Occupational Research and Development and in association with a consortium of state and provincial vocation education agencies. Together, serving education. <laughs>